to another video of Coding Cleverly. You might be noticing a sudden rise in my subscriptions. Well, I want to start this video off by giving a huge thank you to Caleb Curry for mentioning my channel in his latest video. The link to the channel and his particular video will be included in the description. Now, apart from that, I will try to be as consistent as ever and also work my way in giving you the best from the rest. If you have any questions related to any kind of video, whether it's any of these videos, all you gotta do is just comment and I will try my best to reply as soon as possible. Now, from all of that out of the way, let's start with today's video. So today's video is about pass by value, pass by address, and pass by reference. So these three different terms and methodologies are adopted when we are doing some kind of transferring with functions. Value, also known as call by value, the call pass by value method of passing arguments to a function copies the actual value of the argument into the formal parameter of the function. So what this is basically is that it just creates a copy when you are passing arguments to a function. Changes made to the parameter inside of the function definition have no effect of the argument's value. So what we could do over here is that the call by value method of passing arguments to a function copies the actual value of an argument into the formal parameter of the function. So it basically creates a duplication of the arguments the values and it doesn't do anything to the original content in this case changes made to the parameter inside the function have no effect on the argument whether you do any kind of manipulation in the definition there's not going to be any kind of effect to the original content of the parameters or what you could call the data types. But default, C++ uses call by value or pass by value arguments. So the way how we're gonna understand this concept is through this famous example, which is called the swap example. So mostly a lot of people come to this part where they have to do this swapping. And what happens is that we create a scenario here. So int, we have a number, I would say number one. I would have a value of 10. Then I would have another integer. So I would have a number two, and I would have the value of 20. So what I'm gonna do is that I want to swap the values of both of them. I want num1 to have 20 and I want num2 to have 10. So how am I supposed to do this? Well, there is a way and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a function. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna first print the values out before calling that function. So I would say before swapping, uh, because my name of the fu uh, function is swapping, so I would say before swapping. So I would just give the values, I would say, um, I would say console output, I would give a num1, and I would give a colon, and I would just put the value of num1 over here. And the same thing I would do, I would just copy this, and I would paste it, and I would just give it over here as two, and over here as two as well. So what, this is before swapping. Now what I'm gonna do is after swapping. So I would write after swapping. Okay, so after swapping, what's gonna happen? We have to create a function here. So before my main logic, my main logic definition, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a function which has a return type of void and it has the name of swap. And what it does, is I would make this as lowercase. What it would do is basically it would have two integers or two kind of per arguments and it will change the content of both of them. So I would call this as anything I want, int x, int y. You could call it int a, int b. I could call it int x, int y. It's up to you, whatever you could name it as. It's a naming, no kind of naming convention whatsoever. So what I wanna do is basically, I wanna swap it. So one method that applies here is that you have to create a temporary variable. So I'm gonna create a temporary variable, which is temp e, and I would just call it equal to x. So the, the thing is that assigning happens from right to left. So it's going from right to left, and you would see that x is content is right now whatever is passed into this argument so if for instance we have a value of 10 over here I would have a comment here and I would just explain that if x had 10 and if y had 20 so after creating our temporary instant variable which is temporary x so it's equaling to x now whatever the content in x is which is suppose we say 10 now temporary has 10 stored inside x is equal to y this is our second step. And now what we have here is that ass assignment, which is this uh, assigning happens from right to left. The value of X is now equaling to 20. So how is this equaling to 20 is the fact that Y's content, which is 20, is assigning to X. So it's going from right to left. Now we have is Y is equal to temp. And why we do this is that 
We have temporary, which is equaling to x, and that was 10. And now x is already equaling to 20. And if I do y is equal to x, I'm just going to get 20 back, which is not going to swap both of them correctly. I'm going to have both values as 20 and 20. And I'll, I don't want that. So I do y is equal to temp. And that temporary variable comes into play when we have this swapping implementation. Here is that y is equaling to 10. We'll say y is equal to 10. After that, what I want to do is that I want to showcase what my content is. So this is just my instant variables. These are not properly defined and they are just copied. So we have the real variables are over here, which are num1 and num2. And I just said num10 as one and, and num2 as 20. So num1 is equaling to 10, num2 is equaling to 20. And before swapping, what I'm supposed to see is num1 equaling to 10 and num2 equaling to 20. But after swapping, when I invoke my function swap, what I have to see is that num1 and I'm, I'm passing num2. I'm supposed to get them swapped when I get this print, print. So basically what I would do is just I would copy this, I would paste this code over here. And instead of that, I would I have to see something like this, but I'm not gonna get something like that. Why? Because what's happening in this implementation here in the definition is that it's copying the instance variables and they're just implementing here, but they don't change the effect to the original content. You're gonna have the same variable, which is 10 and 20 being called in the memory. So we'd have the same as 10 and 20. Now what, what we're gonna do is execute, compile and run. So you could see before swapping 10 and 20, after swapping 10 and 20. So how can I change this up? For that, I would have to use another method, but you could see that it does change inside the function definition. If I call this over here, I would comp, like temporarily say I would call X and I would temporarily say I would call Y and you will see that they will change the content. So if I say something like X and Y, I would call them. You're gonna see first value, which is gonna be 20 and second value, which is gonna be 10, which is over here. So if I like, comment this code out over here. I would comment this code. I will also comment this code out over here. And I would also comment this one over here. And I just want to see what swap does to it. I'm basically counseling output this x, y values. So you would see that they swapped inside the function definition, but not outside. You could see over here, 20 and 10 did swap, but when I'm applying pass by value or call by value, functionality, it doesn't basically change the entire program. So here comes pass by reference or call by reference. So if you haven't watched one of my videos where I cover references in C++, I recommend to watch that video and the card for that video will be appearing on the top right corner. So you could click on that card and watch that video. So what pass by reference deals is that it's the method, another method, just like pass by value, pass by reference will basically pass the arguments by their addresses, references. So this method of passing arguments to a function copies the reference of an argument into the formal parameter. So what here is that this is actually known as the formal parameter. And here is known as the actual parameter. So you have this as the actual parameter, this as the formal parameter, which is defined in the function. So these are basically instance variables, which are created temporarily in the memory. And then after that, they are destroyed. They're out of scope and they're no longer part of the memory. The main things that are part of the memory, the stack, are these which are defined in the main logic. So pass by reference doesn't necessarily create these instant variables, but they actually are called aliases to the exact same variables. So the, the more it's gonna get clear when I'm gonna start writing the code. So what I'm gonna do is just configure out this. And what I wanna do is I wanna solve this solution. I try to make this function swap the values, but unfortunately passing by value didn't work for me. So now I'm gonna apply pass by reference. So what I'll do is that instead of passing it with int x as just like that, I would put the ampersand symbol. And this is known as the ampersand address symbol. And you could also pass that similarly over here. So what this basically means is that 
instead of creating additional temporary variables, I'm basically creating aliases to the exact same numbers that were passed in the actual parameter. And they will just change up the value. So they will have access to my values, which are over here. So num1 and num2 are over here. Now pretend x is just another name for num1 and y is just another name for num2. And now they will get changed and they will now show me instead of writing console output over here i would delete this and i would get the value over here so i would uh, uncomment my code which is right here i would uncomment this one and i will also i would uncomment this one which is right here by deleting all of this and also i would uncomment this part i would uncomment this part this one and this one now let me save this and uh, compile and run this so i passed by address and what happened is that before swapping the numbers were like this and after swapping they finally changed this is the method and that was about pass by reference the last method is pass by address also known as pass by pointer or you could call it call by address so what this does is that it copies the address of an argument into the formal parameter so we're here we have a formal parameter which is this we have an actual parameter which is over here these are called actual arguments and these are called formal arguments this is called a formal parameter and this formal parameter and this is called the actual parameter so so what happens is that this is happening and what we're going to do here is now instead of getting references we're going to do it by pointers so if you don't know what pointers are i do have a separate video which i covered the concept behind what a pointer is in c you could see the card on the top right corner and i encourage you to click that card and watch that video before watching this part so what happens is that it passes the address of an argument into the formal parameter so it just does is that it creates pointers inside the memory. I would do here is that I would just change this code a bit. Instead of addresses that are passed inside of our formal parameter, we're gonna have pointers. So we're gonna have this star over here and we're gonna have this star over here. Now what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna change this X to a star. We're gonna change this Y to a star. We're gonna change this X to a star as well. And we're gonna change this Y as well. So what I'm doing here is that I'm creating dereferencing. So again, I would like you to watch that video so you could understand what the concept is. If you do, it's really good. So what I'm gonna do here is now in the, my actual parameter, I'm gonna pass these by their addresses. So I'm gonna put the ampersand symbols, one over here, and I'm gonna put one over here. Now I would save this code. And what you would see exactly is that to pass by a pointer, the argument pointers are passed just like any other value. You just pass it by any other value. What you would see is that inside the function, the address is used to access the actual argument in the call. And what does this mean? Is that it's using its address. It's creating pointers inside the memory. They're actually having dereferencing. So what happens is that X is just a pointer that stores some hexadecimal value. Here we give them num1 and num2, which have 10 and 20. And obviously everything that is stored in the computer is stored in a specified address so 10 and 20 do have some addresses i would say that suppose that 10 has an hexadecimal value which has hash 101 well i could have anything and the 20 would have some kind of other ha uh, has a hexadecimal value which has 110 and i don't know it just could be some anything random so what what it does here is that these are the two hexadecimal values which are as addresses and these are just going to be passed inside of the actual parameter when it goes into the formal parameter here the formal arguments are going to be pointers and these are going to be having the same address meaning the pointer values will be the addresses of this it would have the address of this one and it would have the address of this one they were going to be stored inside of this and i'm dereferencing it so instead of having the address printed out i'm giving the asterisk symbol in, in, in front of it and i'm pointing to the value in which it's pointing to. I know it's a bit confusing, but if you watch my pointer video, you would get clear understanding of what I'm talking about. And then after that, we assign the similar same exact thing, and we're just accessing the value instead of the address. And here you would see that the same exact result will appear what we had with the pass by address. So I would execute, compile and run this code. 
and there you go before swapping 10 and 20 after swapping 20 and 10 so this was it with this video i would see you in the next video and before uh, signing off i would like you to subscribe to the channel in which i will get motivated to do even more videos and that was it with this video if you have any questions please let me know in the comment sections and i will try to help out as soon as i can okay so that was it with this video and we will see you in the next one Oh, 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 oh,